Hey everybody, this is Robert the Red Prince, and today we are doing a review on, uh, the. You know, as y'all know, last week, uh, Thor The Dark World, the DVD, came out, yep. and uh, I, the only other really great Marvel movie I have loved, well, I mean, I've loved all the Marvel movies, but my second favorite movie, uh, Phase One, would have to be Thor, would have to be the first Thor, first one, yeah. and you know, and me and uh, Rebecca, who is a big time Thor fan, she melts every time she thinks about uh, Chris Hemsworth. Um, warning, real quick, there are going to be spoilers for this review, and you know, if you don't want to know anything about the movie, just want to pick it up on DVD, yeah, you know, turn it off now. All right, so basically, I give you a quick rundown of what happens. In it. This happens after Avengers. Um, it's uh, Thor has been gone from Earth for you know a year after the Avengers thing. That means he's been away from Jane Foster for a grand total of two years, and uh, basically war has erupted all throughout Asgard or the Nine Realms, and Thor has been tasked to basically put to back together the uh, the worlds uh, as a uh, Loki has divided them, where Asgard wasn't around to keep the Nine Realms in check. So, uh, uh, well, at the same time this is all going on, uh, an evil race known as the Dark Elves, who uh, once tried to destroy the universe by using a magical stone known as the Aether to basically turn the universe back to complete darkness. Uh, what happens is, is that uh, Jane Foster, how he, how he planned to do this, actually, was the worlds converged in all the nine realms converged into one perfect uh, alignment, and with the ether he was going to basically destroy the universe with it. Well, how what happens is Jane Foster finds the ether and it becomes its host uh, host body basically, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you know it's one of the it's uh, you know, basically the MacGuffin of the entire story. And Thor has to go and, um, you know, try to protect Jane Foster from uh, the Dark Elves. Their leader, Malekith, goes through a, uh, on a rampage looking for the Aether. He goes into Asgard, um, basically tears the place apart trying to find her. In the midst of it, he kills uh, Frigga, Thor and Loki's mother. We th Loki's still in this. We actually get to see what happens to Loki. And, you know, he's been basically put in a cosmic timeout. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we it, one thing leads to another. And it comes down between a battle between Thor and Malekith. And, uh, you know, it's just, those are the basic ideas of the story. And like I said, my uh, wife here is a big-time Thor fan. You get, and she is, <laughs> she's a few, it's a huge fan of most of the characters, mostly Lady Sith. And, you know, one character that has not shown up yet, but we think might be a three, or possibly if they do a Loki spinoff movie, which that would make me happy, um, the Enchantress, which uh, there cool. was, there were so many rumors that the Enchantress was going to be in here, that Thor, that Chris Hemsworth's wife, his wife was going to be playing the Enchantress, which to me would have been just awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, back Hugh, you know, I remember before, way before the Thor movies came out, you know, I made you read all of those Thor uh, books, yeah. books, and you just absolutely love them. So, with this movie compared to the first Thor, and this one now, uh, what did you think of it as a whole? As a whole, it's not as good as the first movie. I have to agree with that, too. I mean, I liked the first one, but... I will say, as sequels go, this one expanded on it. It expanded on it. It made the uh, the city where Thor lived, the Asgard, uh, Asgard, sorry, bigger, but still, you're still missing a lot of pinpoints. I still say the book's better than the TV. Oh, the comics is always gonna be better, but um, you know, it's just those are nitpick things. I um. Uh, I personally, the big I compared to the first one to this one, I think uh, a lot of stuff was lost in the translation. Yeah. The intimacy of that of the first one was sort of lost in this one. It was it lost. was bigger and it was great and I loved both of them. But when the thing like 
the whole look. They kind of stole some stuff from Star Wars, and it yeah, I mean, like if you when you watch the movie, we have to explain what we're talking about. Uh, that you watch the movie, they they basically take a complete technological approach to Thor, which I, I gotta say that was one of the things, just like you, that I didn't like. I, I liked the idea that that hammer was magical. Cool. Yeah. I liked the idea that they were sort of godlike. But they were still sort of aliens. It was up to you to determine what, what, what you wanted. But this one just sort of took it, okay, they, the Dark Elves have spaceships. They have guns. Uh, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. It's like their whole ways of traveling. And the, the well, we, those were just our little... Those, that takes care of a couple of things that we didn't like. But uh, just as you, what were three things you did like, and what are three things you didn't like? I like to see the other realms. They were nice to see. Yeah, and we got to be in one place other than Earth, Asgard, or Jotunheim. We didn't get to go to all of them. I mean, they, I had to leave a little bit of mystery for Thor 3, because, yeah. you know, the, spoiler alert again, there's going to be a Thor 3. Well, hopefully we'll get to visit more realms this time around. Oh, oh Continu yeah. Continuing. Well, we've hit the really nice-looking ones. You're about to see the not so nice looking ones. I know. That's what I want to see. Uh, what was another thing that you loved? Well, um, I like seeing Lady Sith in there as always. Uh, Sith played a much bigger role in yeah. this one than she did in the last one. And the the death scene for the queen was really nice. Oh, would. I wouldn't say it was nice. I mean, but I'm just saying for like when she finally passed on and what the king did for her. He's talking about the funeral, funeral, the Viking yeah. funeral. Yeah, they did this gorgeous Viking funeral that uh, they basically lit her on fire and set her out into the stars. And uh, everyone in Asgard is in there. It's this beautiful moment. It's uh, it's kind of sad. Uh, it was really sad. Yeah, it, I mean, was really it was really sad. It was really sad because... But the thing was about her, they didn't really give us a lot on her. I mean, in the first movie, she was like in two scenes. Mm. Two scenes of the entire movie. This one, she actually talked to Odin. And uh, she basically tried to beat the snot out of Malekith. Yeah. I mean, for a little while of the movie. Yeah, at first I didn't think she was a warrior type. I, I, if you've read the books, you know Frigga is a warrior yeah. type. Yeah, but I'm saying in the movie... You the, see it, yeah, you oh yeah. But what uh what was your uh what was one of the next biggest things that you loved? There's not much more I can really give you a movie on what I wore. What about the very ending? Oh, yeah, the very, very ending, yes. The Lord does come back. And uh they uh he comes back and he loves and embraces in Jane Foster's eyes and uh -huh. But uh, yeah. Well, those were those are the things that you really like. What were we already talked a little bit on? To the, what was one more thing that you didn't like? Well, one of the replacement of the actors in there. Oh yeah, Zachary <laughs> Quinto, was, Quinto, yeah, whatever. Yeah, then she it. misses the guy from Once Upon a Time, which uh, to me it didn't matter as much. I thought he did a good job. But yet, I'm such a big Thor fan. I like every character being a certain way. <laughs> but really, I didn't see that much difference. I mean, he wasn't a pivotal character. He was. I know, but his hair and the. Uh, and you could tell it was fake, but the other guy's hair was. The middle, the first one was a little douchebag. He must yeah, have. but you can at least <laughs> tell that he could at least do the character. This other guy can barely. He can barely talk. talk. But that that's beside the point. I think. Uh. Well, all in all, yeah, those are great points. Um, I uh, I looked at the movie a little bit different. You see, I, I look at Thor 1 was, uh, like I said, it's other than Iron Man, the individual movies, other than the Avengers, the Avengers will always be me a work of art that only Josh Whedon could have done. Uh, but, uh... But you're excited for the next one. Oh, yeah, I'm really excited for the next one. But anyway, uh, I, I look at it as Thor 1, you know, was a great introduction to these characters and I also think that uh, you know, that was a more intimate story. It introduced you to Loki, Jane Foster, and Thor. 
and you know that was this one was more on a scope. They had they were trying to get bigger in the wake of the Avengers. So I, I liked that. I liked how they took it from that to the other. We got to see more places, which is what you and I biggest complaint was about yeah, Thor one. Um, one thing I liked was the uh, uh, you know obviously the interaction between Loki and Thor. It's so much more intimate in the Thor slash just the Thor movies than yeah. it was in the Avengers. You got to see a whole different side to both of these characters. It mm -hmm. went back from we saw them, you know, love each other to hate each other in Thor One. We saw them, you know, grow to just hate each other in Avengers, and now exactly. you're back to, you know, I would have died for you. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what would have happened, you're still my brother. I love that part that, you know, Loki, I still love Loki as a villain, and he will, him, you know, if you, spoiler alert, when you read the end of this, you find out what happens to Loki at the end, you know there's going to be a Thor 3, and yeah, it, you, it's awesome. It's just freaking awesome. Uh, but watch it anyway. You, you've got it's something you got to see. I just can't tell you. Um, and uh, I loved at the end that both of them got what they wanted. Yeah. Uh, another thing I liked was the just the com most of the comedy in it was really spot on in most places where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know I liked Chris Hemsworth acting in this was just much better. I mean, let's face yeah. it, when you watch Thor, you know that, you know, uh, Chris Hemsworth is a great, he's a good actor. He's not the best actor, I would say. He's just, this one, I, I felt more emotion from him. I felt like he was, he was actually Thor. The last two, he's just, he's just coming out of his shell in the last two. Yeah. And, and okay, let's move on to the things I didn't like. Like you said, I didn't like Asgard being turned into the Death Star. In a, a run on the Death Star by the Very Dark Elves. Uh, I, I didn't like... We were pr sort of promised from the way the trailer came up that there was going to be... We were finally going to get a choice between Sith and Jane Foster. And I wanted to see that sort of competition between Sith and Jane. Uh, I wanted to see the distraction in Thor's eyes. Because if you've read the books, you know that it doesn't end how you think. Mm -mm, not at all. And uh, I, I just loved the idea that we would finally know who he was going to choose. And you know, personally, I'm 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 a proponent of Jamie Alexander, the, you know, Lady Seth, because she is one fine woman. Uh, but uh, you would have to agree. I agree. Yeah. Shoot, I want a cosplayer. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the another thing I really did not like, did not like, they had Malekef, this villain, that they did nothing with the villain. They did nothing with the other villain in this. It was up again to Thor and Loki to carry the entire movie. And Malekef, the accursed, is a awesome villain in uh, the series. He's just sort of this proponent of evil, and he's he's a lot like Loki. That's why I don't understand why they didn't do a team up between the two. They could have done a lot better. They could they could have. It wasn't a bad movie though. I liked it. It was entertaining. Uh, we got to go around the nine realms. I just didn't think it was as good as it could have been. And another thing, they made the final battle <coughs> so silly. Yeah. And, and you know, I I was. Let me give you some example. I I didn't. I, I wasn't doing videos when they did Man of Steel. And I, I trashed on that movie a little bit because Superman didn't make any jokes. It was all serious and uh, fighting in between the two, him and General Zod. Mm -hmm. This one, it was so, it was such the opposite end of that spectrum that I didn't like it for the same reason I didn't like the Man of Steel final fight. Yeah. Or the movie. I mean, altogether it wasn't bad, but I've got to, I've got to give credit where credit's due. Both of those could have had a little bit balanced. Uh, approach to those fights, and you know that's just the that's the way that was the director's vision. That's my opinion. That doesn't necessarily have to be yours. All right, guys. Well, this has been a red uh, redneck review of uh, Thor: The Dark World on DVD. 
And uh, we're hoping uh, y'all are enjoying this. And, uh, you know, I know my wife has enjoyed talking about Thor. Pretty much a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, again, thank you so much. Please leave us some comments on our uh, video if you've enjoyed it. If you've uh, liked it, please let us know. We love to hear feedback, and, uh, you know, God bless you all. Thanks so much.